How's it going everybody and welcome back to our NSXT series where we're building up the data center portion of our lab. So I was able to get all six of the uh, ESXi host deployed, one through six, they're all there, all ready to go. Everything's good to, everything's uh, ready to go. The next thing we're going to go do is set up the storage. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up our topology real quick. I'm going to go ahead and set up uh, DC1 SAN and get him squared away where he's going to have two NICs. Um, that we're going to deploy. I'm going to show you how to walk through how that process works. 400 gig hard drive and we're going to actually um, it's 400 total gigs I should say. So I'm actually going to break that up into two 200 gig hard drives and uh, we'll have one hard drive will be for Windows, one hard drive will be for Linux and go from there. So without any further ado let's go ahead and build this out. I'm going to go ahead and create register a VM and click next. This guy here is going to be NSX uh, SAN. The guest OS family is going to be Linux and I'm going to choose uh, down here Ubuntu Linux 64 bit. Click next. We're going to choose DS2. Next. We're going to go ahead and get this guy two procs. Um, I'm going to give it four gigs of RAM. The hard disk, the, the main one here is going to be thin provision. This is going to be where the operating system is installed. I'm going to give it another standard hard drive. This one's going to be 200 gigs, thin provisioned as well. And then I'm going to give it another hard drive. This one's going to be another 200 gigs, thin provisioned as well. So you could keep adding hard drives. And just so everybody understands what the purpose of all the individual hard drives are, when you're dealing with a remote storage array and you're going to be providing the bulk of your storage to your virtual machines that are going to be running on these ESXi hosts via remote storage, the number one, it's got to be fast, right? you got to have a high-speed connectivity between the virtual machines uh, sitting on those hosts and the storage array. So in this case, we're, we're going to be leveraging iSCSI, which is basically allowing you to enable storage over an IP-enabled network. And there's other ways of doing it. Another popular way is doing fiber channel. I don't have the capabilities of doing fiber channel in my home lab. I've actually been kicking around the idea of trying it, and just because I've always it's just the one storage protocol that I don't really know that well. So, um, but that's basically where another option we have as well. Now I could continue adding hard drives. So what you can do when you're building these hard drives out is you can build them in such a way that each one of these is a different LUN, logical unit number. And the LUN essentially is going to be a different hard drive that can be presented to your ESXi host and then eventually the virtual machines that are going to be sitting on them. So I am, I'm going to go to storage, uh, I need two hard drives. And the reason for that is because when I go to put host 1, 2, and 3 into a cluster, that cluster is going to have DRS enabled on it. It's going to have vSphere HA turned on on it. And in order for it to do its job, there needs to be a couple of different hard drives to do data store HA heartbeating. So basically all that means is that when you have a VM running on, ho on host 1, the uh, HA is going to be using the management network for communication. And then you're going to be also leveraging the hard drive because you might lose management access to a ESXi host depending on how it's connected to the network. However, in the event that something does happen, you can at least look at the hard drive. You know, is there reason writes going back and forth? Is there actual information being sent back and forth at the hard drive level? Because even if management's offline, hard drives might still be working. So with that, uh, with that fact being in place, if you do have a situation like that come up, you can re revert back to data store HA and data store heartbeating and go, okay, well, I do see reason right. I see data going back and forth. All that stuff is good, which means that the host is still online. Just management might be out of, uh, might be unavailable. So that's why we're going to do two different storage arrays because that's going to be necessary. It's actually a warning that'll pop up. Um, it'll say that uh, the minimum amount of uh, data storage has not been met, which is two. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That's why I have that in place there. I'm going to give it another network adapter. Uh, the first one here is going to, they're both going to be a lab port group. One of them is going to be our management network. The other one's going to be our connection to 
our uh, for the actual data plane. So we'll have one control plane and one data plane. The host device, the data store ISO file here, will be free NAS 11.3. We're going to select that. We're going to go click on finish. All right, so now I'm going to go through the actual install. This process is actually pretty simple. I'm going to click on this guy and power it on. Walk you guys through the process. So we're going to go ahead and press 1 to do the boot up process. This takes uh, some time to do its thing, but once you get past a certain point, it'll be pretty straightforward. We're going to go ahead and do an install upgrade. It says the computer has less than 8 gigs of RAM. Yes, we're going to go ahead and continue. So we're going to, where do you want to install the actual operating system? So we're going to press the space bar and we're to select DA0, but you see DA1 and DA2 is detecting the disks. So these disks right here are going to be used for the ESXi storage. This is our block level storage right here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Uh, we're going to proceed with the installation. It's going to go ahead and erase all partitions. And we're going to go ahead and set a password, the same password we've been using, capital P, at site, SSW0RD, and repeat. Hit the enter key. We're going to boot via BIOS, and then there we go. I'm going to pause until we can interact. All right, so the installation succeeded. It only took probably five minutes. It's actually pretty quick. I'm going to go ahead and enter key, and I'm going to go down to reboot system. And it's going to go ahead and reboot, and after a few minutes, it'll come back online, and then we'll have to configure the networking pieces of it. And then once that's all done, then we'll be able to log into the UI via RDP session, and then we'll be able to go and start building out our storage array and all that good stuff that goes along with that. So I'm going to go ahead and let that do its thing, and I'll bring you guys back in once we're squared. All right, so our console setup is here now so I'm going to walk you through some of the basics that we need to have running so I'm going to go ahead and pull our topology back up and we need to have two different IP addresses so 172.31.151 and 172.31.12.51 those are going to be our IP addresses so let's go ahead and actually get this process started so I'm going to go ahead and press on 1 to configure network interface I'm going to choose VMX1 uh, this is remove the configuration of the network. Uh, yes. Or, I'm sorry, no. Configure DCP? No. Configure IPv4? Yes. Interface name? VMX0. What is the IP address? 172.31.1.51 um, slash 24. Here we go. Configure IPv6? No. All right, so that takes care of that one. Now we're going to go ahead and create a VLAN interface and this is going to be needed in order for us to do any of the networking that we need to for the storage connectivity. So I'm going to go ahead and press on 3. We're going to say 1 to create a VLAN interface. What's the parent interface going to be? We're going to choose VMX0, or I'm sorry, VMX1, excuse me. I'm sorry, 2. What's the VLAN? So it's going to be VLAN 12. VLAN uh, tag is going to be 12. VLAN description is going to be iSCSI SAN. And I'm going to go ahead and create one, create a network interface. I'm going to say for VLAN 3, or sorry, 3 for VLAN 12. And nope, I do not want to remove. No, I don't want to do DHCP. Yes, I want to configure IPv4. Interface name is going to be VLAN 12. The IP address will be 172.31.12.51 slash 24. Just like that. Configure IPv6? No. All right, now that I've got all my configuration there, I get to go back over here to our RDP session. And I'm going to go pull up DNS. There it is. So now I should be able to pull up Google Chrome, point to Google Chrome. Uh, I'm sorry, point to our storage array. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to be the default real quick. Close that out. We're going to go to HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash DC1 dash SAN dot NSX dot local. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and click on advanced and then proceed and then voila. I'm going to type in root 
and then the password we set, capital P at site SSW zero RD, and log in. All right, so here we are. This is our mm -hmm. console. And what we're gonna go do is we're gonna click over here on services. I'm gonna go ahead and turn iSCSI on. I'm gonna click on start automatically. Now there's other options here too as well, but I'm not gonna be using those. I'm gonna go ahead and actions. I'm gonna click on configure, but I'm gonna go to the wizard. And I need to create or choose a block device. So I'm gonna choose, this is gonna be SAN1. The de device, you have device or file. Device is gonna be block level storage where you're gonna be presenting a hard drive to ESXi. File is gonna be NFS where you're gonna be presenting a file share. So we want device, we want block level storage, not file level storage. I'm gonna click on next. On the device it asks me which one I wanna use. I'm gonna do DA1. So uh, I'm gonna go click on next. And the portal, I'm going to create a new portal, and the IP address is going to be 172.31.12.51. Click on next, and then I'm just going to go ahead with the defaults. I'm just going to, I'm not going to put anything in there uh, that's uh, overly necessary. Now I'm going to go to the associated targets, and you can see LUN ID is LUN ID uh, 0. I'm going to click on the three dots, say edit, I'm going to change it to be LUN ID 1. Save. Perfect. Now I'm going to go back to the wizard. I'm going to say the name is going to be SAN2, the device, and then we're going to choose the 200, other 200 gig hard drive. Click next. The portal is going to be the one we've already selected. Next. Click next again and submit. Now we're going to have both of those there. I'm going to go to the associated targets. I'm going to choose SAN2. I'm going to click the three dots to edit. And I'm going to make this LUN ID2. Just so that it's lines up and it, it's easier to read. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is it. There's nothing more to this process than that. So we have successfully set up our storage array, free NAS inside of our ESXi environment. So now we have an iSCSI array that we can map to all of our hosts and have shared storage. So we can do vMotion and a bunch of other cool stuff. With that being said, I wanted to thank you guys for stopping by and hanging out with me in this video. And until next time, guys, take it easy.